I'm now joined by attorney Gerald Thurswell of Thurswell Law Firm in the Detroit area. Uh, good, good evening, Counselor. Good evening, Mildred. How are you? I'm fine. Wanted to spend a few minutes with you with you today. I wanted you to help us understand some things. I'm sure you are aware of 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 the story. First of all, let me just tell tell uh, my listeners who you who you are. Attorney Thurswell has been honored as one of the best lawyers in the country, the oldest and most respected peer review publication in the legal profession. He is a highly regarded expert in medical malpractice, birth injury, as well as auto litigation. He's a obtained numerous multi-million dollar jury verdicts and settlements for injured people in courts throughout Michigan and in other parts of the country. Now, you all, if the name sounds familiar, you you might remember uh, Attorney Thurswell uh, was hired by the family of the man who died in the in at Northland Mall. Um, in a situation uh, with security guards there. Just just refreshing uh, uh, your memory there. I asked him to talk with us uh, this evening about uh, a Detroit man who received a 35 to 50 year prison sentence for raping three young girls in his family. And this case has drawn uh, national attention because a judge ruled the witnesses who are now adults could testify in this case and that they could wear their traditional face veil that covers everything uh, but their eyes. Uh, Attorney Thurswell, what makes this case unique? Well, first of all, the Constitution of the United States provides the defendant the right to confront his witnesses. And what he has claimed is because they're wearing their veils, he has had an inability to confront his witnesses. The court then had to make a decision as to whether or not the court should order the witnesses to take off their veils or they would refuse to testify. The United States Supreme Court decided years ago that the right to confront your witnesses is not absolute. And, uh, and then the Michigan Supreme Court said that it's in the discretion of the trial court. Confronting the witness, confronting these witnesses, this defendant had an opportunity to confront them. He could hear their voices. He could hear the, their demeanor. He could hear if they were hesitating, if they were avoiding an answer. He could hear the tone of their voice. He saw their eyes. What he was deprived of was not seeing their cheeks. These witnesses have uh, the Constitution also provides people with religious freedom, the right to exercise their religious beliefs. And their religious beliefs prevented them from taking their veils off in front of any males. So if, if the court had decided that these witnesses would take off their veils or they would be precluded from testifying, that would in mean, in essence, that people could rape these Muslim women and get away with it. They could just do it every day. They could assault them. They, they could, uh, you know, uh, rape them. Uh, this was a good decision by the trial court in this case. You can't give immunity just because you're, you're going to rape or assault somebody of the Muslim faith, somebody who is required by their religion to wear a veil in the presence of men. You know, this is a, a, a very interesting case on, on, on several levels. Um, I want my listeners to know that the Wayne County jury found Muhammad Masur, Masrur, 51 years old, guilty of 15 counts of criminal sexual conduct. Uh, these things, these acts allegedly occurred in 2000 against three female relatives who at the time were 10, 12 and 13 years old. And his attorney is, may, is, is saying that his client didn't get a fair trial because some of his witnesses testified wearing uh, the garb that, that attorney uh, Thurswell has, has just uh, described. He could not see their entire face. Uh, he could only see their eyes. Um, does he get, well, I'm sure he does, all, all, all defendants do. Uh, does he get to appeal this to a higher court? He absolutely will, but I don't believe, I don't believe that he will prevail in the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court because the United States Supreme Court has already ruled that the right to confront your witness 
is not an absolute right. Then the Michigan Supreme Court, in a case that arose out of the city of Hamtramck, where there was a woman who um, was, uh, was the plaintiff in the case, she was wearing her veil, and the court ordered her to take off the veil, and she said, no, I'm not going to take off the veil. And it went all the way to the Michigan Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, uh, you have discretion to order it or not. In this case, uh, you did not have discretion to order her to take off her veil. It's a, it's a conflict between the, the right to exercise your religious freedom versus the right of a defendant to confront their witnesses. But the right to confront the witness, as I said earlier, is not an absolute right. Think about it. You can hear the person's voice. You can hear the manner in which they're talking. Are they being evasive when they talk? What is the tone of their voice? Are they being hesitant in the way they answer? So you, what, what is he really losing? Seeing their cheeks? I don't think you need their cheeks to confront the witness. This is really, really interesting. Um, according to the court... Uh, Masroor was able to get the girls in l- alone. Uh, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about 10, 12, and 13-year-old girls. And in this particular community, uh, generally the mothers are with their girls. But here, here was the clincher. Since the mother was not related to him by blood, she could not be in his presence unless she was fully covered. And that provided the opportunity, according for the court, for him to commit these crimes. Um, just- you know, it was interesting. It was interesting because the prosecutor had argued in this case that to to force these girls to take off their veil, to force them to take off their veil, it's like them experiencing rape again, a second time, uh, coming where they where they were brought up and with the religious belief that a man other than their husband shouldn't see them uh, without their veil, um, I can understand that. But what would, what would have happened is the girls would have refused to testify, and this rapist would have walked free. And that's, that's, the, that, that's the tragedy if, a, if the court had said, uh, you either take off your veil or we're not going to let you uh, testify. It is such an uh, an incredible case. It really, really is. And one of the reasons, uh, Counselor, is because this community is a very close-knit community. Um, the fact that, and sometimes when you have close communities, the communities will decide to handle crime within their communities on their own. Um, so this is great that it made it to court. Yeah, you don't want uh, you don't want an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You want to go through the uh, judicial system and you want justice to prevail. You don't want people to take the law in their own hands. What are the lessons to be learned uh, for lay folk uh, uh, from this case? I think the court really, really in this particular case, justice was done. Justice was done. They convicted a rapist. And if they had, if the court had ordered these girls to take off their veil or refused to testify, the court couldn't order them to take off their veil. The girls just would have refused to testify because you can't force somebody to go against their religious belief. I don't know if you remember way back in the Vietnam War, there were conscientious objectors. Oh, yes, I do. And people, just like Muhammad Ali, he was able to avoid the draft because of his religious beliefs. The courts throughout time have always stood up for people's right to their religious freedom. So that it isn't unusual that the courts, in this case and another case, recognize the importance of religious freedom. You know, uh, Attorney Thurswell, I'm hoping that one day you'll come back and, and, and certainly talk with us uh, because uh, about the, the Muhammad Ali case, which is a very historical point uh, legally um, and otherwise in America. Uh, that was a very important case. Uh, Muhammad Ali was a conscientious objector, and he said that his religion uh, forbade him to uh, to go to war. And uh, it was just an ex- we'll talk about that sometimes. What happened with those justices? Because one of the justices had a clerk who spent his weekend reading about <laughs> the whole Islam piece. And showed back up at the Supreme Court on on Monday telling uh, the justice, you know what? <laughs> it is true. But it's an interesting story. It's, it's, it's such an interesting case it was because Muhammad Ali was a fighter. It wasn't just a, an ordinary person like you or me. 
he's a fighter, so you would say, oh, well, he's a fighter, well, then he, sh- he should be able to go to war. Mm-hmm. There, was a, there was a big distinction. He wasn't going to kill uh, another human being. And, and that decision was a historic decision. And it's a, it's a wonderful decision that our courts stand up for religious freedom. Without a doubt. I want to thank you very much, but uh, let me first of all tell our listeners how they can contact the Thurswell Law Firm. Uh, that's at 248-351. No, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Let me give you the right number. That is, I just wrote it down here, 248 354 2222. That's 248 354 2222. And uh, as I said when I uh, introduced uh, Attorney Thurswell is that uh, the firm specializes um, in, I'll let you tell them what your specialty is. We handle uh, all personal injury cases. We handle medical malpractice. We handle auto accidents. We handle police brutality. You referenced earlier the case at the Northland Mall where the security guards uh, held down Mackenzie Cochran until he died. Any type of injury as a result of somebody's negligence or intentional acts, those are the types of cases we handle. Attorney uh, Gerald Thurswell here on the Mildred Gaddis Show can be reached at 248-354-2222. Thank you so much, Counselor. We'll Thank talk you. Soon. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.